Tonight, here on 11 at 11, our unsolved team is taking on Cowboys Cold Case. Good evening, everyone. I'm Doug Profit. And I'm Lisa Hudson. We're tracking heavy rain and your top stories of the day. But first, Shay McAllister takes you inside a possible murder for hire. It's gone unsolved for 30 years. Watch closely. You could be the one that helps solve this case. his fate. Was that part of the plan to make sure he was home? What if? What if I should have went home? It's been 30 years since that call. 30 years of asking who killed Bernard Hopkins, the man called Cowboy. It's a peaceful property in Gallatin County, Kentucky, a place Norma Bladen no longer goes. It's difficult knowing that this was the last place I saw him. The last place she saw her younger brother alive. <laughs> I'd just like to have one more day. The same place she found him dead on a March night in 1989. As I entered, to my left was glass jars on the floor, and I thought, oh, he's had a nightmare and broke some ashtrays that was on the coffee table. But then, As I got closer, I got, I'm sorry. I saw his face. And all I can remember doing was I screamed and I went under the kitchen table. Investigators say Cowboy died instantly, a single gunshot wound between the eyes. Nightmares. Something I can't erase. The shot was fired through the front window of his trailer, aimed at Cowboy, who was asleep on the couch. Then they looked at the crime scene on the interior of the house. Was there anything moved, anything ransacked, things like that? And they didn't find anything like that. So it was obviously there was, the only crime that was there to be committed was a murder. Detectives worked through the night. And it was super foggy. Collecting clues quickly, they were at the scene until morning. The person that did this, is a calculated person and he covered his tracks rather well. But there were some things he couldn't hide. Come around here and you start looking at some stuff. Lead detective Indre Samu says KSP officers found a well-formed footprint near the back of the trailer. We're sharing it with the public for the very first time. The footprint helps to identify uh, a form of description of the suspect. The shape and size says they're looking for a male killer, at the time thought to be in his late teens. So the staff came out here and they started looking for, look for a bullet casing. And the gunshot trajectory tells a tale of its own. The fact that it was only one shot, so you know you're looking for an experienced hunter. But police say there's reason to believe the shooter didn't work alone. First, they point to that suspicious final phone call. Obviously, back in the day in 1989, there was no cell phones as they are today. So if I was going to make sure that the person was home, you call him, make sure he's home. Cowboy called his sister Norma after he got that call. He told her he didn't recognize the voice, but knew it was a woman. I believe that it was a warning, but he didn't take it as a warning. Between the caller and the killer, police have their suspicions. I know who did this. The person who did this is still alive, still well. But 30 years later, police are still building this case, 
A case that could be a murder for hire. Could be, could be. He vows it's only a matter of time before he catches Cowboy's killer. My mom and my dad passed it, not knowing. And I'm getting older, and I want closure. Thousands of you have been following our unsolved team, digging into the cases, sharing the clues. Let me show you what that looks like. This is our unsolved team last night, a moment captured as they listened to a phone call from the detective at the center of last night's unsolved case about Jane Doe. He told us because of our story, he now has two new suspects and one lead that could take the investigation out of state. That's why we're doing this series and we're committed to spreading the details of these cases with